Hello everyone. Once a husband and wife were at a dinner party. While talking to some of their friends, the topic of marriage cropped up. Someone suggested to them to try marriage counseling. Oh, they will never need that. My husband and I have a great relationship, the wife explained. He is a communications consultant and I am an actress. He talks really well to me and I pretend to listen. After hearing four Old Testament readings and then the epistle with accompanying responsorial psalms and gospel, I wonder how many of you would be still interested to hear me preach this evening. Some of you perhaps would act and pretend to be interested. Anyway, I will try to keep you awake. What does Jesus' resurrection mean to you personally? Holy Saturday is a time between the darkness of Good Friday and the brightness of Easter Sunday. It was a time of great darkness for the apostles. They had put all their trust and hope in Jesus while he was with them. But with the death of Jesus, they seemed to have lost everything and they were full of fear to see what might happen next. And what did happen two days after the death of Jesus was more amazing than anything they might have hoped for. The Gospels do not describe the resurrection of Jesus, for it was an event which could not be seen. However, the Gospels narrate the experiences of the disciples from the moment some women of Galilee saw the empty tomb. They went expecting to do the very last thing which they could do for their friend and Lord Jesus, to honor him by anointing his body. Now some might ask why the body of Jesus was not anointed before the burial, as was the Jewish custom. There are some differences between the Gospels regarding the details. In fact, John says that the body of Jesus was anointed and wrapped before his burial, whereas the Gospel of Mark and Luke mention that the women went to anoint the body on the third day. One of the reasons probably was the time of Jesus' death. Since Jesus had to be quickly buried before the Sabbath began at sunset, they might have not done a proper anointing, and they could not do it on the Sabbath day either. Therefore, the women returned the day after the Sabbath, intending to complete the anointing. But the story says, when they arrived at the tomb and found the tomb open and empty. Imagine what they might have gone through at the time. Not only had their friend been killed, now even his body had disappeared. But then they suddenly saw two men in dazzling white clothes. They bowed their heads in fear because they thought that they were angels and they did what many others before them had done, humbly bowing in the presence of the Holy. They found light and courage in the midst of darkness and fear. They were reminded of the words of Jesus on his own suffering, death and resurrection. It reminds us, when we bow our heads humbly before the Holy One of God, he would speak to us in many ways. They immediately brought the message to the other disciples, including Peter, and later on, they were also amazed at what had happened. Today's liturgy helps us to understand and experience as much as possible the first Easter experience. So we began this evening with a church in darkness, symbolizing the darkness and emptiness in our life. Then 
we were reminded of the salvation history, recounting the great stories from the Old Testament, how God was always reaching out to people, how God saved the Israelites from Egyptian slavery and brought them to a land of peace and freedom, and yet how the people through selfishness, pride and arrogance and indifference forgot their God and finally how God calls everyone to accept his plan of salvation through his son Jesus Christ. The whole of the human race gains everything including eternal life through the suffering, death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Yesterday, Good Friday, we re reflected upon the question Jesus put to the soldiers and gods when they came to arrest him. Whom are you looking for? He said, I am, referring to the name of God. Today, the angels asked the women, Why do you seek the living one among the dead? In other words, they were reminded that Jesus was not just a human being like them, but he was God, the Yahweh, breath of life. So he would not be among the dead. The question is not only addressed to the women, but also to us. Why are we looking for life in people, places and things which are dead and empty? Why are we looking for fulfillment in places, people and things which can never satisfy our restless heart? Of course, at one level, the women were not seeking life. They came to anoint the dead body. But at a deeper level, they were seeking, just as we are all seeking, something that which truly satisfies our longing. The angels, knowing their inner desire, asked them why they are looking for him among the dead. Like these women, we too long for something which can truly make us content and at peace. But we look for them in all sorts of people, places and things except in God. We do not recognize that contentment and fullness of peace and joy lie beyond material things, places and human beings. Even a very close and intimate relationship cannot meet our inner restlessness or longing. St. Augustine said, Lord, you have made us for yourself, and our hearts are restless until they find their rest in thee. We need to look in the right place, turn from our sin and unbelief, and put our faith in Christ. As we do, we will meet him, the living one, the giver of life, peace and joy. God alone can fulfill the deepest longing of our soul. Amen. God bless you.